pull up in the choir. <laughs> Besides, I'm a member of the Greyhounds. Amen. We don't share our talents with anybody else. <laughs> 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 I I get that. <laughs> what does the Lord require of me? Micah asked and answered that question some in his letter. Chapter 6, verse 8, he says, you get up your white seat. He has showed thee, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. Solomon and Ecclesiastes says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole man. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Yeah. Moses talking to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy says, And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Last night, as I was reading in 1 Kings, and this wasn't originally in my devotion, but in chapter 17, we are introduced to Elijah. And the Lord tells Elijah to go to the brook of Cherubeth, drink from the brook, hide thyself, and he will feed them with the rains. And Elijah says, So he went and did according unto the words of the Lord. In Luke chapter 5, Jesus is at the lake of Gennesaret. Says the crowds are pressing on him and seeing two ships, he gets into one of them and goes out and sits down and teaches the people. And when he is through, he tells Simon to launch out into the deep, put your nets down for a catch. And Simon says, Master, we have toiled all night long and have come to but at your word, yeah. I will. Yeah. In John chapter 2, Jesus is at the marriage in Canaan in Galilee. This is where he performs his first move. His mother comes to him and says, They're out of wine. And he says, Woman, what has that to do with me? Seeing my hour has not yet come. And Mary tells the servants, whatever he says unto you to do, you do. Yeah. Satan wants to put doubts in our mind about the word of God. Whatever the Bible says that applies to me as a follower of Jesus Christ, I am required to do. As the ushers come forth, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the blessings you have bestowed on us as an individual and as a church. Father, it's good to be in the house of God. Yes. May we go away today saying that. And Father, I pray this morning if there's anyone here who doesn't know you as Lord and Savior in their lives, that this will be the hour that you bring conviction and conversion in their lives. Father, we pray that you bless this offering. Bless both the gift and the giver. May it be used wisely for the glorifying of your name and the upkeep of your kingdom. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
sometimes the glory is rough. But I've got a friend in Jesus.
Very good. I'm going to stop right there. And I, I want to use verse number one as my text verse. And I want to preach about the things that I found at the house of God. Solomon talks about the treasures in the house of God. And I'm glad that we've got some treasures in the house of God. Lord, we love you. Help us now, I pray. And we'll love you and thank you and praise you and give you glory. We ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you look up what a treasure is, Sister Joy, it means something that's been tucked away. A valuable that's been tucked away. You can go outside, you can, you can look in our driveway, Brother Billy Cole, and there's a bunch of gravel. I mean, there's just nothing but rocks. You can go outside here, outside those windows, and find some rocks. And I mean, to me, Brother Jim, rocks are rocks. But you take a dime, and the dime is not just any old rock. A dime is something that's valuable that's been tucked away, sometimes found in hidden places, and you've got to work and you've got to chisel. And I, I got to think, now I know that we're the body of Christ. I know that we're a living organism and that we're the children of God and that brothers and sisters join together by the blood of the Lamb. I know that we're the church, but this is the house of God. This is the house that houses the house of God. And I got to think, and I'm glad that I'm part of a building that will never be destroyed.
right there. Or I'll pull that one out and guess what? Ten more come into place. <laughs> and, and, and Sister Angie's been cutting my hair for a little bit now. I, I'm sure the three years she's been cutting my hair, it looks like that piece of baloney's getting bigger and bigger. <laughs>
or her. You know, I, and Don recently, I, I found out from Hindu from Don and also Sister Rachel, but you know, uh, the Indians, they'll have that red dot on the forehead. I always kind of wondered what it means. And uh, they'll even use, it's not a passage of scripture from the Bible, but they make it sound like my sin is ever before me. And they say as they continue, it was uh, one of Don's co-workers said uh, at one of the Felsford that ended and told Don said that or somebody as their sin. The, however much sin they had in their life, the bigger the red dot was. Said, I wear that dot because it covers my sin. Now, I don't know about you, but I can go out and get a piece of construction paper that's red or take an old red sticker and put it on my forehead. That ain't done nothing to make me look crazy. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about the Hindu or anything like that, but if you see no preacher Nathan up here with a red dot, you're going to say, what is what he do? He's at one of his crazy things again. But, but you know what? I got to think it's just him. Here's the thing. They think a red dot covers them. I know a red dot covered me. Two thousand years ago, praise God, there was a drop of blood that washed all my sins away. And if you got saved, one drop of blood. It didn't take a whole gallon, but praise God, one drop of blood washed all your sins away. Yeah. And guess what? If you're here today and you're lost, hey, one drop will do. One drop will do. Daddy Red. 
And there, there's the altar of incense. And that's prayer. One thing we find in the house of God is prayer. And that we got to pray in church. Hey. What makes the difference is prayer. What made the difference for Paul and Silas at the midnight hour was prayer. What made the difference for Peter when he was locked up in jail was prayer. What made the difference for Hannah when she was praying for a child was prayer. What made the difference for Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane was prayer. When, when he was in so much agony, he said, Father, at the beginning of the way, let this come past for me. He said, but not my will. Thy will be done. The Bible says that the angels came to comfort him. Yeah. Why?
Lord, if there's one here today hurting, maybe going through a trial, going through some sickness, going through something, I, 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 I pray God they come, I'll lift them up to you. Lord, we beg you to help them. Lord, Preacher Jack's a great man. All he can do is pray. Lord, I try to be a good man. All I can do is pray. Lord, we've got brothers and sisters here that can come pray with someone. But Lord, the only one that can really offer me head. The only one that can make the difference is you. So Lord, we'll touch lives. We'll praise you. We ask you in Jesus. Amen. Let's stand together. Give number 180. 180. If you need to come. Don't worry about those around you or what the devil's trying to do. If you need to come, you come to Jesus.